Welcome back. Today we're going to tie a hare's ear and talk a little bit about why I fish those so much. I, I probably fish a hare's ear more than any other nymph there is. Uh, this is one of the oldest flies, one of the most simple flies on earth. It is probably one of the most accurate flies there is also. If you got this fly in two colors basically you can fish anywhere there's mayfly nymphs. Uh, I do a couple things different on my flies than some people do. Uh, one, I tie almost all of my nymphs on dry fly hooks. And what you're going to see here is I've got a 305 and a 075. The difference is one's a nymph hook. And you'll see when Johnny uh, close-ups on it, it just means it's a one extra strong, meaning the hook's a little thicker. And you'll see that when he gets zooms in on it. Me personally, because I use the lead to get the fly to the bottom, you know, on my system, I don't use weight uh i don't weight my nymphs i always always tie mine without weight and I, I use this system to get it to bottom so i like that lighter wire hook just lets it float that's just a personal thing so what we're going to tie like i said is a a hair's air so what we're going to need is a hair's mask you can use pre-dub you know just pre-bought dubbing that's hair's air i like to use a darker wing case on most of my nymphs and i still have the the peacock curl I'm going to be using uh, just nylon thread. I do all my flies with Danville. I do my nymphs with Danville Burgundy. It's just something I've done forever. And the other thing I'm going to do that's different than you'll see is even though it's called a gold ribbed hair zare, I use uh, Crystal Accent or Crystal Flash. And this, I got a question a couple weeks ago, how do you keep your stuff organized? And I'll tell you, these tubes are one of the ways I do it. They're just super simple. Uh, you put your materials in here. I'm going to be using gold. Actually, on a lot of them, I use pearl. But you'll see when you're using these things, you just stick them back in there and tube it, push it down, and everything's right there. It's super simple. They're really cheap, too. So, with that said, I'm going to use this as the ribbing instead of wire, uh, light wire hook. And we're going to get it. Oh, one other thing the tail is just going to be a partridge hackle. Uh, there's about 10 million of them in there, so it's just going to use one feather off of that for the tail. So, let's get time. So, like always, use the hook as your gauge. I want this fly to have, if you look at a hairs there, it's generally got a one-third of the front of it is the wing case. That's your okay. thorax. And so, use your thread. Just start it roughly. If you're going to air, air more towards the middle. So, you want a nice big wing case. So, I'm at one-third, two-thirds. So just put in my thread here, come to the back. Uh, like I said, most commercial uh, hair zares have this giant, ridiculously thick tail made out of hair. It's generally about as thick as the body, and that's just absolutely ridiculous. You should be using the tails. They either have two or three tails, the naturals do. I usually take five or six fibers here of a partridge hackle. I just pull it down to the side and pull them off so they're all the same length. Try not to drop it. If you do, reach over here and grab a new one. Right. So, where was I? Oh yeah. So pull off, get four or five of these, pull them off so they're all the same length. And then always, just like, you know, every time, any video I've ever done, you see I'm always using the hook for the gauge. Is, it tells me how long my materials are. And the tails on this hair there, I want to be the length of the body. So bumping up against here, just take it, transfer it onto the top. Make sure it's nice right on top. And then you're going to see, I'm not going to cut these off too much. I'm going to cut just a little bit of the end. So, And I, I leave those in so I build a taper in advance. So now I'm going to come back here and build a little bit of a taper. And then I'm going to take my crystal accent and I'm simply going to put it over top of the thread and I'm going to, stuff's pretty thin, and I'm just going to pull that in tight right to the top, secure that back so it's out of your way. This stuff's kind of, it's really really light stuff so, and it, if you pull on it too hard like I just did a little bit, it'll twist on you just a little bit. Just get it out of your way now right at the butt here and I'm going to do a dubbing loop and I've referred to this we did a show on I don't know three or four shows ago five 
about dubbing loops. I use them exclusively. And if you've watched any of my old videos, you've seen I've used this tool for, uh, I've had this one for almost 20 years. And my buddy Dylan and I got together. Dylan uh, owns Rising Fishing uh, Equipment. And he came up with these new ones for me. And we're going to be marketing these soon. They're, they're really handy. Uh, they're just a lot faster than all those little short ones. But how you, and you, like I said, you can go back and look at the archives and see how you do a dubbing loop. But just hook it in the tool, come around there, make a wrap around it like that so that it's, it just tightens it up at the bottom. And then advance your thread right to where you, you know, we started right here. Don't go past that point. And then I'm going to leave this down here so there's not so much stuff in the way. And then again, this is called a gold ribbed hare's ear. And so that means it's tied out of the rabbit's ear. Well, that's kind of true, but not really. Generally, we work off the entire mask. And so yeah, I'll pick off the ear, but I'll pick off the cheek and a, just around, especially into the bigger flies, you're going to pick off more because the the ear hair is really, really short. So what you're going to see is I'm going to kind of randomly pick. I'm going to go through here. I'm going to pick a little. I'll pick a little of that hair out of the ear, and I'm not getting much. I'm, you know, see, it looks like I'm pulling all of it, but I'm barely getting anything out of it. And then I just just get a little bit of the fuzz, and both of them, and then just blend them just a little bit so it's not one big piece. And what you'll see is I'm going to, as always, whenever I do a dubbing loop. I'm going to build a taper. So it's going to be thinner at the top. That's going to be the triangle. And the base is going to be thicker down here. And that's when I wrap it, it'll create a, a wedge going forward. And so just open the thread up with your finger. Take that dubbing right there. Stick it between the, the two threads. Super simple. Just get it nice and tight. Make sure it's already got its taper. Get it close to the thread, to the hook. And then just give it a little bit of a turn. Now, I only have to go this quarter of an inch. So I look at it in advance. I make sure it's going to do what I want. And you watch how fast this is. I put my finger here and I spin it. I hit my hand. And I'm done right there. So that's going to give me, and you want that nice and picky. Get that first wrap right behind there so it's covering up all your thread. And then just move forward. <clears throat> trying to get... A nice picky body. Okay, I'm right there. You're going to cover up some of that with your ribs, so don't worry about it being really long. Not, I mean, not crazy long, but you can see it's, it's in there. And I always, you can, you can do this with uh, at one piece. You don't have to cut it off. I always cut mine off. I find it easier to work around than having that tool there. So anyway, now I'm back here. So I got this dubbing all picky. And then you see I'm wrapping this and I'm trying to make it one piece and then I'll come forward. And the reason I use this stuff is because it's got a little bit of shine to it. Alright, and I come forward, now I'm at the one third point again. Relax this so it's all unstranded so you're not building in one bulky piece. I tie mine right forward to where the eye's going to be and then I cut it off. And the reason I do that is I'm, I'm constantly trying to build my tapers in advance. And so, and so I go forward with material, it gives me a little bit of bulk. Now I'm going to tie in, I like to have a darker wing case than the, than the rest of the body. So what I've got here is peacock curl, and I, I do almost all mine with peacock curl. And I tie it in tip first. So the tips are here under my fingers, and the butts are back towards the back of the hook. And the reason you do that is this has the fibers lay in a certain direction. You can see them going this way right now. But I'm going to wrap that forward and then they'll lay back and they'll just look, I mean, doesn't mean much to the fish, I'm sure. It just looks cleaner. So again, now I'm going to put this in here. And again, I'm going to build taper. I'm going to build bulk. But you can see I'm not going all the way to the eye. And so I come in here, get right to where the eye is going to be come right back. Now I've built a little bit more bulk. A good rule of thumb when you're tying nymphs is that the thorax, the front part, should be two-thirds the size of the back. And that should be just, it's just a rule of a third bigger is fine. So now we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to build another dubbing loop. Two turns around, one turn around, excuse me. And back here, now you can see I'm right to the where the eye or not the eye, but the head should start. 
and I'm going to do the same process again. I'm going to take my hair's mask, and this time though, I'm going to pick a little bit longer hairs. I'm going to come right in here, and I'm going to pick a little bit longer ones. I picked half his head off there. And the reason I'm doing that is that this is, now I'm up into the front third, and I want to have a little bit longer hair. Didn't get quite enough there. I don't, I don't need all of what I'm, when I blend it, I lose some of it. So I just get in here, and I don't want too much fuzz. Just get a nice piece. Now this one doesn't have to have a taper to it at all. This one can be just all the hair. All right, and again, I, I, I need very little hair here. This is going to represent the legs because I'm only going that little tiny bit of with the thread. Get your finger in there. And again, try to slide this down close to your hook. Look it over, pick it, and then just start it. Start turning it to see that you don't have a whole bunch of it falling out, and then give it a spin, and then come in and just pick the pick the longer hairs out. Now what I do is I, I hold this straight up and I make sure I get one good turn, nice and tight, and so I'm covering up that wing case. And then what you do, just wet your fingers and pull that hair back so that it's all going in one direction. And just come forward, just try to, it's going to fight you a little bit because you're, you've spun the thread. Okay, so now I'm right to where the eye or the head of the hook, the fly is supposed to be. So, cut that off, come in there and set it so that's going to be your head. Now, separate, I like to just split those hairs down so there's, you can see they're longer there on the bottom, so in the front of the hook. And then just pull your peacock forward. Make sure they're laying pretty much, you know, one right beside each other so you're not covering any of your peacock curl up so these are all kind of the same direction a couple turns in there just come in and finish it off I, I like that the red heads on these I don't, I've done it my whole life I don't know I just it looks sexy to me so now we should have longer hairs in the front we got a little craziness right there. I don't know what that is. All right, we got our wing cake. Our our peacock curl is sitting nicely on top of there. The legs are a little bit longer in the front. You can see, tail's the same length as the body. This is such a simple fly. It's just it represents almost every mayfly there is. It you know right now it's spring and if you're in the east you're gonna have Hendrickson's and Betis out here. We're gonna have Betis going. Uh, kind of grays and olives are really good for that, but just keep your proportions right, and I'm sure this fly will fish anywhere you fish. Hope that helps you out.